Hey guys, what's up? Carlson SK here, and welcome to my guide on the fight caves. This guide will apply to everyone, but my target group is actually Ironman. Now, I do want to keep this guide as short and concise as possible because I hate long guides, so let's go ahead and get right into it. The first thing that I would like to discuss is weapons. A lot of people take on the fight caves using the rune crossbow and diamond bolts, but I highly recommend that you actually go for the magic short bow imbued. This is what I used for my first completion, as well as my four other completions. This also makes it pretty hardcore friendly because you don't have to go into the wilderness to kill the crazy archaeologist for a rune crossbow. To get the magic short bow, you can do some fleshing, or you can go ahead and just do hard clues, that's what I did. You will need to do hard clues anyways to get black dehyde, because that is what you are going to use during the fight caves as well. Anyways, back to the bow. Now that you actually have the magic short bow, go ahead and imbue it through LMS. And while you're here, go ahead and get yourself around 900 rune arrows. And that is the weapon and ammunition you are going to want to use during the fight caves. Now let's go ahead and get into stats and gear. For your stats, you are going to have at least 70 range, 44 prayer, and 40 defense. 70 range is the bare minimum level I would do the fight caves using the MSP imbued. You are going to want to have 44 prayer, obviously for all the protection prayers, as well as for eagle eye. And then 40 defense is so you can actually wear the black de -eyed. And then for a bonus recommendation, and one that I highly recommend that you go through with, is 58 slayer. This is so you can get and imbue the black mask. If you would like to, you can go ahead and do some point boosting as well to get a slayer helm. And that is probably the best in slot thing you can use at the fight caves. Now let's go ahead and get into gear. Now the first gear setup that I'm going to be showing you is the bare minimum that you should be using. After we discuss this, I'll go ahead and talk about upgrades. Now for your weapon and ammunition, we are obviously going to be using the magic short bow imbued with the rune arrows. For your body and legs, go ahead and get yourself some black de -eyed. For your helmet, go ahead and slap on the black mask imbued or the slayer helm imbued. Put on your Ava's accumulator, an amulet of power, rune gloves or barrows gloves, the Shazian boots 5 or snakeskin boots, and lastly an explorer's ring. This is the absolute bare minimum that I would recommend going into the fight caves with. Now let's discuss alternative setups. If you don't have a black mask imbued or black dehyde, I doubt you'll have a void, but if you do, go ahead and put that on. As for your weapon, like I said earlier, if you want to use the rune crossbow, go ahead and use it now with diamond bolts. Now for actual upgrades, and this is mainly targeted towards normal accounts. If you have enough money, I'd go ahead and invest in a blowpipe. I wouldn't get really any other weapons because you want something fast. And for your ammunition, I would use adamant or mithril darts. Now for your body and chaps, you can go ahead and get god dehyde, carols, or you can get armadil if you have that much money. For your amulet slot, go ahead and upgrade to a glory, a fury, and then an anguish. For your helm, once again, I would highly recommend a slayer helm. Otherwise, I would use a helm of nezet knot, an archer helm, god dehyde coif, or an armadil helm. For your boots, you are going to want to go ahead and upgrade to Ranger Boots, God Dehyde Boots, and then Pagations. Now as for your gloves, go ahead and stick to those Barrow's Gloves. And then lastly, for rings, I would recommend that you use the Archer's Ring and Bude if you have that. Otherwise, just stick to the Explorer's Ring. And that is pretty much all the gear that I am going to discuss. Now let's talk about inventory setups. If you have access to Raging Potions, go ahead and bring two of those. And with this, I would recommend bringing a little bit of food, anywhere from 4 to 8 Karam Wands. You don't need that much food because you can actually regen health during the cave if you get too low. And then other than that, go ahead and bring yourself a holy wrench if you have one. Otherwise, just fill the rest of your inventory with prayer pots. Now let's go ahead and discuss the actual cave itself. The most important tool to actually completing the fight caves is knowing cave rotations. And don't worry, this is way simpler than it sounds. On the RuneScape wiki, there is a page labeled Tazar Fight Caves Rotations. Here you will see 15 different rotations that you can get in the fight caves. For each rotation, the first four waves are labeled as to where the enemies are going to spawn from. So upon starting the cave, go ahead and center yourself in the middle, and make sure you memorize where each of the enemies spawn during these four waves. Once you've completed the first four waves, you should be able to know what rotation you are on. Upon figuring out your cave's rotation, go ahead and open up the link to it. Here, you're going to see every single one of the 63 waves in the fight caves in order. You're going to see where every enemy spawns throughout these waves. You're going to see where you should probably stand most realistically. And as you go, you can actually mark which waves you have completed. This makes it really easy to track where the enemies are going to spawn from, where you should stand, and it makes the fight caves pretty much cheesable. In all honesty, with this, you can actually just go into the fight caves with a full inventory of prayer potions and some really terrible gear, and you could probably complete it. Now before we actually get started, here are my tips for taking on Jad. For one, focus strictly on Jad before you do anything else. This encompasses attacking healers, healing yourself, or using prayer potions. As you can see in this clip, the second that Jad attacks me, that is when I go to heal, attack the healers, or use prayer. I do not do this while Jad is attacking me. The second I see his attack come out and I have the right prayer on, that is when I take action on something else. As for my second tip, and everyone says this, do not panic at all. Now this doesn't mean don't get nervous. I get nervous every single time I do Jad. Even during this kill right here, I did actually end up panicking at one point because I didn't have the right prayer on, but even with that said, I stopped panicking immediately, used the right prayer, and attempted to tick eat it. Albeit, I don't even know how to tick eat. Now for my third tip, I suggest finding a way to keep yourself calm. 
I still get nervous to this day every time I fight Jed, and I've killed him like 10 times now. But to help keep myself from getting nervous and keeping myself as calm as possible, I listen to some really calm music without any lyrics. I make sure to breathe. And lastly, I verbally announce every single one of Jed's attacks. The physical second I see Jed hit the ground, I say range. When I see Jed put up his legs, I say mage. It may not sound like this will help, but it really does. And this is what has helped me kill Jed every single time that I've killed him. Now, I'm going to show you an example of this. Even after watching this guide, if you would like to watch a full unedited completion of the fight caves, I will be providing a link to my video on this in the description below. To start the cave, go ahead and enter, and do not press continue. Wait until your character runs to the middle. This makes it to where absolutely nothing can spawn, and you start the caves when you want to. So let's begin. So starting off, as you can see, we have the bat spawn next to us in the center. Following this, we have a bat spawn from the east, and a bat spawn from the south. For the third wave, we have a fat boy spawning from the east. And as you can already see, just after wave 3, we already know the rotation of our cave is 2. So with that known, let's go ahead and knock off these first 3 waves, and let's continue the rest of our cave normally. Just a heads up, you can actually log out during the fight caves, and you will not be penalized at all, but you will get teleported back to the center of the arena. Now that we're a few waves into the actual fight caves itself, I am going to go over a few of these spots that you can hide in. We got this spot right here, which is my favorite overall. Just north of here, you have this spot as well, which is actually not a safe spot, but it will get enemies trapped here if they spawn here. As for the far right, over here, we have Italy Rock, which is really nice as well. Once again, like this spot, you will not have enemies get trapped on this side right here. They will be able to walk right to you, but it will get enemies stuck here as well. Once again, with this place being your focal point, this is the best spot because any enemy that is over a one by one will get trapped on this rock right here, and you can safe spot them. We are now in wave 6, meaning we know next wave a ranger is going to spawn. So make sure once you go into wave 7 that you have protect from missiles on. There is our first ranger, let's go ahead and take him out. And for the spot, if a ranger spawns anywhere other than right here, you can go ahead and drag him all the way to the safe spot by running to this corner right here. This does actually apply to mages as well, and this is an essential mechanic to know. And this is because of our attack range. Because we are using the magic shortbow, our attack range is not that far. This does apply to the toxic blowpipe as well. If there is an enemy past this point and you attack them, you will get dragged forward. If you get dragged forward enough, you can actually get hit by enemies that are stuck over here, and if it is a major, you can get hit pretty hard. This is a mistake that I see happen far too often in the fight caves, and it is one that I still make to this day. So just make sure you drag your enemies when you're in this spot. So, we're on wave 13, and we are now moving on to wave 14, which means we are going to get double rangers. Make sure to start this wave while praying protect from missiles once again. And upon completing this wave, we are now going to have the melee healer spawn. This is a big boy, and they can hit pretty hard as well, but these guys are extremely easy to save spot. These guys really aren't too much of a problem, to be honest. Now, while you're in this spot, make sure to take advantage of the enemies getting safe spotted. If there's a bat or something else behind them, go ahead and just take them out. This makes it really easy to avoid unnecessary damage, as well as losing prayer points. Now, for this wave, we actually had a healer spawn right here next to us, so I'm going to go ahead and drag them this way. Moving north just a little bit, I can kill that bat while moving. And just like that, we have these guys safe spotted once again. So, you've made it to wave 21. This means the next wave being wave 22, we're going to have both a healer and a ranger. In the case of rotation 2, we actually have the healer spawn directly next to us, and the ranger is going to spawn east of us. That means our safe spot right here is not going to work for this wave. Now if you are a little more experienced with the cave, you don't really have to leave this spot because you'll know what to do. But for the sake of the guide and to do this as safe as possible, I am going to go ahead and go to Italy Rock. And as I stated earlier, this is not a safe spot so enemies will swing around this corner and you will have to pray against them. Now as I stated earlier, you can use these big old rocks to get enemies stuck on them. And this is a prime example where this can actually come in to be helpful for you. Because of the rotations map, I knew that the healer was going to spawn right here and the ranger was going to spawn right here, so standing at Italy Rock is the best thing to do because they'll both get dragged and stuck on this rock. If you can't tell already, the rotations map is literally just a cheat code. It turns the fight caves kinda into a puzzle to be honest, and you will be using this map the entire time pretty much from this point on, especially later on into the 50 waves. And this is why the rotations map is such an important part of the fight caves. Once you figure out how to go about the rotations map, how enemies get dragged, and where you should position yourself, you can pretty much master the fight caves. I have done the fight caves 5 times on this account thus far and I have yet to die because of the rotations map. Even for my first time ever doing the fight caves, as you can see in this image, it took me 2 hours and 30 minutes. I still managed to do it on my first ever try and I didn't really have that much of an issue. And now after actually having done the fight caves quite a bit with the rotations map and knowing how to go about it, as well as actually having just a little bit of a higher range level, I can now do the fight caves in less than an hour and 20 minutes as seen here. So please listen to me and use this. Here is once again a prime example of the dragging mechanic. Dragging this ranger all the way over to this corner makes it safe for me to actually click on them. As you can see right here, if I click on them, I will run and I'll stop right here. If they're any further forward, I will get dragged forward. 
and say that was a mage right there, I would get hit. And yeah, that's not too good. By the way, here is what pausing the cave actually looks like. Just had to go get some water real quick. If you tried logging out midway during a wave, it will tell you that it will pause it after you complete the wave. Here's the actual message you get when you pause the cave. But if you complete it and then log out, you'll get sent to the center of the actual cave upon logging in next time, and you'll get this message. And similarly to when we first actually started the cave, nothing will spawn until you click continue. And in some cases, you can actually use pausing the cave to your advantage. This was not one of those instances. Now moving on, these are two more safe spots that I actually recommend using in the cave. South of Italy Rock, right here, you can block enemies from attacking you, which is weird because like I said up here, that is not the case. They will go around this corner, but here they won't. Additionally, this entire wall right here serves as a safe spot to enemies north and south of you, and you will end up using this safe spot quite a bit throughout the caves. Not so much for enemies that are stuck north of you because that doesn't really happen that often, but there is a lot of instances and ways where multiple enemies will get stuck on this wall. A lot of the times it's actually a major and a ranger. So now we're on wave 28, meaning next wave we're going to get double rangers plus a healer. I find that the best way to take on these waves is to locate where the ranger is going to be in relation to the healer and get the healer trapped behind the ranger, like this. Go ahead and take out the healer first, and then you can kill the two rangers. Now, following this wave, wave 30, we'll have double healers. The best way to go about this wave is just to simply drag the enemies over here, and just take them out without having to pray at all. And now we're moving on to wave 31, where the actual fun begins. From this point on, no matter where you are starting a wave, if you know for a fact that you will not have a major stuck, pray mage, because these guys can hit really hard. And this is where the rotations map really comes in clutch. As well as the dragging mechanic, I would really recommend that you put this into practice starting from this point on. Now to conserve yourself some prayer, whenever you have a major spawn next to you and you have enemies trapped, go ahead and kill the major first so you can take off protect from mage. This way you can kill the other enemies freely without using any prayer. But remember, like I stated earlier, if you don't know where the major is going to spawn, make sure you have protect from mage on because of this. The physical second we started that way, we got hit by a major. Now moving into this next wave, I'm not going to put Protect from Mage on because I know that the Major is going to spawn up here, as you can see in the rotation map, as well as right here with the Major actually stuck. Now when it comes to setups, you can drag enemies as well. If you come out enough from this ledge right here and further down, you can drag the enemy this way and you can bring them to the safe spots. This way you can set yourself up for the next wave. Moving into wave 38, we are going to have both a Ranger and a Major spawn, so we have really got to start applying these mechanics. Once again, looking at the rotations map, I know that a Major is going to spawn south of Italy Rock and a Ranger is going to spawn over here. So the best place for me to be during this wave would be north of Italy Rock. So before I actually go ahead and kill the last enemy in wave 37, I'm going to save them, I'm going to pray against them, and I'm going to run to Italy Rock while dragging them. This way I can kill the enemy when I want to start the next wave and I can be set up for when these Majors and Rangers are both going to spawn. And as we can see right here, they have both been trapped. Now when this happens right here, go ahead and pray against the first enemy you are going to face. And attack your target from around this area. This is because if you move a little too far forward, you can get attacked by both enemies at once, which you don't want to happen. Now kill your first target, and the second you see that their health is at zero, switch to the next prayer. Like so. Now at this point, feel free to kill your next target while looking at the rotations map. If you have to move to another location, go ahead and do so, but because I know that the next wave I'm going to be at Italy Rock, once again, I'm just going to kill the enemy and then move over here. Now when it comes to dragging enemies in this location, make sure you attack them from next to this fence because if you do not, you will get dragged out right here and you will get hit. Now here is an instance where I have to drag the last enemy over here because I'm going to have a major spawn here and a ranger is going to spawn here. So the best way for me to actually have taken on that wave was to drag the major this way, drag them all the way over here, kill them, and then start on the next wave. And now that I'm actually in the next wave, I'm going to drag the ranger to the safe spot so I don't walk out too far and get hit by the major. I'm going to take this enemy on, and then once they're dead, I'm going to take the Major on. I would also like to mention around this point, now that we're in wave 40+, plus, make sure that you conserve as much food as you can and keep at least one ranged dose for Jad. Having that extra range attack bonus is going to be really important for the Jad fight. That is, even if you have ranging potions. For my first Jad attempt, I did not, so I didn't worry about this. Now as for food, make sure you have at least four Karam ones going into the Jad fight. This is because you will naturally have to tank a few healers during the fight. And you will also want to have the food in the event you make a mistake, which I highly doubt you will. And that's because I believe in you. And because this is also my guide. Now if you're running low on food and you absolutely need to save the rest of it for the Jad fight, go ahead and do this. If you take damage at any point like this, just go ahead and use the Rapid Heal Prayer and just hide behind a wall until you have full health again. This will really prolong the length of the cave, but it will make it to where you don't waste any food and it will make it as safe as possible for you. Adding on to this, if you are running low in prayer as well, don't use the rapid heal prayer, just simply sit here. It will take double the time to heal your health back, but you won't use any prayer or food, so it's worth it. That is why my first cave took me 2 hours and 30 minutes. 
And to make this healing more tolerable, I would really find something else to focus on while you're waiting. For instance, you can do some homework or listen to some music. You could watch some TV or some other YouTube videos. I would really recommend this guy named Carlson SK. He's got some pretty cool videos. And if you even want to, you can go check out his Twitch as well. Link in the description and shown on the screen right here. Shameless plug, by the way. And just like that, we are already full health once again. So the next big wave you should concern yourself with is wave 45. On this wave, you have two rangers and a major spawn. For my rotation, I got fairly lucky and both the rangers came right to me. But in some cases, you are bound to get hit by both a ranger and a major at the same time. If this is to happen, go ahead and pray mage the entire time. And in the process, make sure to kill the ranger as soon as you possibly can. Like shown. This is because the ranger is far easier to kill, it has way less health, it's a lot less accurate, and it does not hit nearly as hard. And now in wave 46, you're going to have both a healer and a major spawn. So surprisingly enough, the cave actually gets easy for a little while. Oh yeah, and while safe spotting, make sure you do not get in melee distance of the rangers or majors, because they do actually melee for quite a bit as well. Congratulations, you've made it to wave 50. Nothing happens on this wave, I just think it's kind of a cool milestone. I also just wanted to mention, if you run out of run energy at any point, go ahead and just use your explorer's ring. Make sure not to teleport though. This is why we actually brought the explorer's ring. Well that, and because of the prayer bonus. Anyways, moving on to wave 53, we are going to get a healer, a ranger, and a major to spawn. So now we have to worry about the great trifecta. But don't worry, this is not that hard. Just make sure you have either the major or the ranger stuck at some point while safe spotting the melee. It is a lot easier than it sounds as long as you use the rotation map. Here is an instance where I actually have to tank the ranger and major at the same time. As you can see, I prayed mage the entire time and ended up actually taking no damage. Which is a little bit lucky, to be honest. But that is the best way to go about that every single time. And now we are moving on to wave 60, the hardest wave in the entire fight caves. I would go as far to even say this is harder than Jad. On this wave, you get two rangers, a healer, and a major to spawn. Based on your cave's rotation, you could really get screwed over on this wave, so make sure you look at it really, really in depth before you start this wave. I got surprisingly lucky, so it wasn't too bad for me, but a lot of the times in the past, I've really got screwed over. Now moving on to wave 61, this should be really easy, you get two healers and a major. Just protect from mage, go to a safe spot, and you should be fine. And now moving on to wave 62, we will get double majors. Make sure to memorize where the orange major is going to be, this one right here. Wherever this guy spawns, that is where Jad is going to spawn on wave 63, aka the next wave. Make sure to set yourself up accordingly, because the next wave is the final wave, and this is where it's really going to matter. And here we go, Jad is officially spawned. Make sure to go ahead and use your ranging pot, use eagle eye and steel skin, and go ahead and start attacking Jad. And congratulations, you have completed Jad. Cannot believe I managed to get that kill. I actually messed up a flick there. <laughs> Let's go ahead and turn into the cape. Will I get lucky today? Never lucky. Congratulations, you are now a proud owner of the fire cape. Now make sure while you're here to go ahead and show the fire cape to the guys in Mobile Wreck. Just simply head this way. The second you see one of these fiery gates, go ahead and use your cape on the guy. They will not take it from you. They will simply look at it and they allow you to enter the city. I did not mean to drop that. So as you can see these Tarkets right here that you can speak to, go ahead and use your cape on them. It will give you access to the city and you will be able to enter. There is some really cool stuff in here that you should probably check out on your own time. Now as I stated earlier, if you are not confident enough in your abilities through the fight caves even after watching this guide, you can go ahead and watch this full unedited completion of the fight caves that I did. Maybe it will help you get a better visual of what you have to do, or maybe it will give you some more confidence in your actual attempt itself. Regardless, that is an option, and I will be linking that in the description below. And once again, as a shameless plug, I did do that entire attempt live on Twitch, where I will be doing many more in the future as well. I stream Iron Man completionist content, and as of recently, I've been doing a bunch of JAD tasks, which is why I kind of made this guide. In just the past 8 days, I've done 4 JAD kills, and seeing as I'm doing a bunch of Slayer right now, I expect to do a bunch more here shortly. Now, I don't want to keep you guys for too much longer, so for those of you that made it this far, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to look out for my future videos and guides, and make sure to check out my Iron Man Completionist series as well, link in the description below. Make sure to also subscribe, comment, and like, and check out my Twitch at twitch.tv slash carlsonsk, as well as my Discord provided right here as well. The link to that will also be in the description below. And most importantly, I hope all of you guys have a wonderful day, good luck in your fire keep attempts, and I hope to see you in the next one. Peace. So before I go ahead and end this guide, I am going to show you guys a few more rotation and wave management tips. I'm going to go ahead and choose a random rotation that I've never done before. I think I'm going to go with 11. 
So as I stated earlier, the best tool to actually taking on the fight caves is knowing the rotation maps and knowing how to lure enemies. So let's go ahead and look at the hardest wave in all of the fight caves, wave 60. For this wave, it looks like you may get hit because all the enemies are kind of clumped up in the same area. But the reality of this is we are going to take literally zero damage during this wave. And to do this, we are simply going to locate ourselves at Italy Rock. The reason we are going to do this is because the healer is going to spawn right here and the major is going to spawn right here. Whenever enemies spawn in this area, they are going to get dragged and stuck behind this rock as long as you're standing right here. So that means the only two enemies that are going to attack you are actually both the rangers. So as long as you pray range and stand right here and do not go too far outward, you will not get hit by anything else. You'll be able to kill the two rangers. You can stand against this wall, kill the major while praying mage, and then you'll simply just have to kill the healer. So let's go ahead and move on to another wave. On wave 45, as you can see here, we are going to have both a ranger and a major spawn right here, as well as a ranger over here. The best way to go about this wave is once again to sit at Italy Rock. These two guys are once again going to get stuck behind Italy Rock, and the other ranger is going to follow you, and from this point, you should know what to do. So let's go ahead and check out another ram rotation. Let's do four. Wave 45 once again, as you can see right here, it is going to get a little bit iffy, but sitting at Elway Rock once again, if you stand right here, the two rangers will follow you and the major is going to get stuck. On wave 60 here, we are going to go to Italy Rock once again, but we will have to worry about the healer this time. These two guys will get dragged, but this ranger will follow us. Following the ranger is going to be this healer. As long as you sit in this corner and you wait for the ranger to attack you, the healer will actually get stuck on the ranger itself. As long as you stand right here, you can actually kill the healer and then you can kill the ranger and then you can take on the rest of the wave normally. And that is pretty much all the examples I'm going to show you. So as you can see, once you figure out the rotation maps and how to drag enemies, you can pretty much do any wave effortlessly. I highly recommend in your fight cave attempt just to go to wave 4, log out, look at your rotation map, and just figure it out to the best of your abilities. It will make you a lot more knowledgeable on the fight caves itself, it will help you very much in your attempts, and it will make it to where Jad should be relatively easy for you. And now, I am officially done. Thank you guys for watching once again. Peace.